Guam, Guahusi Colleen Sinicas Perez of Joint Region Marianas. Today with us is Mr. Tony Ramirez of the Department of Parks and Recreation, and we're at Laddie Park. Mr. Ramirez, thank you so much for joining us today. Mr. Zeus Mahasi for asking me to be here today to help you out in your program. Well, one of the things that we're going to talk about is that March is actually tomorrow month. And I wanted to talk to you about what is, why is that very important? Why is it important to celebrate our, our culture? Well, every culture has various dates throughout the year where they celebrate uh, their own cultural heritage, their own legacy, whether it be history, uh, music, uh, folklore, performing arts, whatever. Uh, on Guam, of course, we have March as tomorrow month. Uh, it's very important, uh, growing up in Guam in yesteryears, like in my years, my generation, is very different from those today who are of Chamor ancestry growing up in Guam. Uh, due to the demographic of Guam today, uh, if you look at the uh, 2010 census, the Chamor population now on Guam is about 40%, meaning that 60% of Guam's population is not Chamor. So therefore, uh, like Hawaii, you have to connect the cultural heritage of Guam to those who have also made Guam their home. So that this generation, uh, if you look at it really, uh, I always like that thing, our history is Guam's history. So everybody is inclusive, not just one group. It's very important uh, that we celebrate this to recognize our heritage, to recognize our identity as the people of Chamorro, and also to perpetuate what is Chamorro to the generation today and to the future generation. So it's very important. Being Chamorro uh, goes into all the different facets of any cultural group. You're Chamorro by maybe your genealogy, you're Chamorro by the legacy of the the music, the arts, the folklore, the food, and the traditions that are uh, a part of what makes us Chamor to any other cultural group. Let's talk a little bit about those values, because, you know, learning a, learning a culture is, is just difficult to begin with, no matter what culture you're trying to learn. So what, what aspects um, are, are very important to our Chamo culture and our Chamo values. One component of culture, of course, is language, and that is the Chamo language. Now, in my generation, or my generation, uh, because it was the post, immediate post of our generation, we were able to speak Chamo. That legacy was passed on. And I go to so many schools today here in Guam, and what I tell the children of Chamo ancestries is that no matter how you look at it, if you're looking at Chamorro, and maybe today you're not able to speak Chamorro, always remember that Chamorro is yours by legacy, inherited to you by the generations before you. No matter how you explain English today to any uh, given Chamorro population of Guam, it will always be a borrowed language, but it can never be theirs because that's not the legacy of their, of their ancestors. I not only speak to the Chamor children about the necessity to preserve their own language, remember now that Guam's uh, demographic has so many different culture groups living here in Guam. And I do encourage the children of the other ethnic groups to maintain also their language and tradition because these are beautiful elements that, you know, they, they're, it's their legacy. It's something that is given to them, not something borrowed that defines them as a cultural group. But what other aspects of uh, the Chamorro culture that you, know, you want our viewers to know about or to really emphasize on? The other components that you're talking about, uh, the traditions that came in terms of uh, and all the different facets of uh, what Guam uh, or the culture is. In every culture you have this life cycle. And the life cycle is birth to initiation to death to marriage and all that. So the Chamorros have the traditions of celebrating these significant events of one's journey in life. And all these different uh, significant events in one person's journey in life have these association to the cultural heritage that we do as Chamorros that are really very unique in its own way uh, here in the Mariana Islands. Can you 
teach me a few phrases. Like I, I know some Chamorro, but not too much Chamorro. But is okay. there, what are what are some phrases that I, as a Chamorro, need to know? Okay. Well, you know, it's 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 very beautiful, and I mean, you know, a lot of people always go like this. Oh, half a day. Right. All right. Half a day. Now, see, now the younger generation is just saying half a day. Right. The A is, is being deleted already. Okay. But when you go back to the etymology of the word half a day, which we learn. All right, even in my generation, we say hafa a day, hafa a day, right? Hafa. Hafa a day. A day, okay. Right, yeah. So you have to emphasize that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But when you go back and you start looking at the origin of both words, hafa is a proto austronesian word. This is one of the original words that were used by our ancestors to say came here. What? Hafa. You see that in the other languages, uh, in the Austronesian languages. But then you go to the word a day, hafa a day, and a day is really a, what do you call that, a pronunciation and the deletion of one consonant, the H, which is hafa adahi. And adahi in Chamorro means uh, to take care of. So actually the true expression is really hafa adahi, which means how are you taking care of yourself. But today, we deleted the age and it's, and it's become hafa a day. It, now the younger generation is deleting the a, and they're just saying hafa day. In the same light, when you say in tomorrow, hafa bidadamu, hafa bidadamu. Okay, hafa I already explained to you, but bidadamu you're going like this. What where's that word coming from? Bidadamu. Well, bidadamu is reduplication, but the base word is bida. Bida in tomorrow is vida in Spanish. So when you're saying Hafa bidadamu, it's you're really asking the person, what are you doing with your life? And and these are the uh Chamorro has so many unique expressions really and very deep. Uh the word sinsuli, which I told you earlier, it simply is based on the word tsuli, which means to take. Sinsuli is something being taken away from you to donate to someone, you see? And it, it, that's another very beautiful word and, and expression. But it's tied in into the tradition. How about Huguaizahal? Because okay. I, I know that. Right. My mom okay. taught me that. Okay. <laughs> Huguaizahal means, okay, I love you. Right. And that's where uh, Chamorro is very specific. I don't see it uh, so much in the younger generation, but in Chamorro, there, is, there, are, there are two expressions. Huguaizahal is an expression used when you are referring to people. Okay, living, animate. Huguaizahal, to a person. If you say, Zahu, those are inanimate objects, like a car. Zao is in a careta. But you would never say, Huguaiza i caretao, because that is only reserved for people living. Yeah. And uh, it just means uh, to love. Guaiza, like Gua is to have, it's to, it's, it's to take a hold of you. It's the being that takes a hold of you to love somebody. So, how would I say to my husband, um, <laughs> I love you, my husband? Okay, Huguaiza o asagua. Asagua. Asagua, yeah. yeah. And Goodbye asagua to too is, is, is a very beautiful word because asagua really comes from the word the gua there from hu gua which is uh, the Chamor County system two, all right? Maisa hu gua tulu fatfen and hu gua means becoming one. Hu gua I love I love you, I love you, uh, I love you, who, whom, whom you have become one with me. That's what it means. That's that beautiful. we have become one. Yeah. That's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, but you really have to understand the etymology and the way this came to me. I, I really love Thank you, Guam, for watching and stay tuned for other island images. Adios and to do small things.